Hi everyone, hope you are safe and keeping yourselves safe during this lockdown. In this video, I will be sharing with you from the Ministry of Health and Dorosalia as they declare that we currently have 29 cases of COVID-19. Please look after yourselves. It is not worth it risking your lives out there until it is all clear. Listen to what they have to say. As the cases begin to rise, it is just not getting better. We will attempt to begin on time at uh, 11.30, whenever we uh, have uh, this uh, press brief. Um, the council, uh, the church mother bodies, declared today a day of prayer and a day of fasting. And it is a Sunday, and I am sure that uh, we all found uh, some time today uh, to give um, our prayers. In fact, maybe uh, Dr. Chunke, I'll tell a little story from uh, First Samuel in the Bible about David and Malachi, and uh, that when David and his soldiers returned to their city, they found that their city had been attacked and it had been burnt, and all their uh, goods are stolen, and their wives and children taken as well by the Malachites. And in the end, uh, the soldiers were so distraught that they began to even plan uh, to stone uh, David uh, uh, himself. But David, even in this time of trouble, had faith and turned to God. And the end of the story is that obviously him and his soldiers found the enemies and uh, they did, uh, managed to defeat them. They took back their wives and their children and uh, all their possessions that had been stolen and even more. We are going through a very difficult time in the country now, just as David experienced. And uh, President Edgar Lungu declared this fight against <coughs> the coronavirus as a war. But we have faith. We have faith that at the end of this fight, of this war, as a people, as a country, will still be standing strong and ready to begin to rebuild our nation, our economy, and our businesses. But to get there, we need to fight this war today. It means that we must find it deep in ourselves. We must find the discipline for personal hygiene. We must find the discipline, not just personal hygiene, but for behavioral change that must lead to us staying at home. The experts have already told us that uh, staying at home is the best way not to spread the virus and it's the best way to save lives. So behavioral change is extremely important. Government put up measures closing all non-essential businesses, bars, casinos, nightclubs, cinemas. However, we still heard of reports like in Kawe where we heard that bars were opening and closing at 18 hours. That is against the law. If anybody needs to buy any alcoholic beverages, you have to go to a supermarket or a shop. All bars should remain closed. I also heard this morning some stories about uh, some church gatherings going on for more than one hour as uh, provided, as guided by the Ministry of Health. Again, that is not safe. We need to ex exhibit behavioral change if we're going to fight this war against uh, the coronavirus. I think we can also use this opportunity as we stay at home to get to know our families a bit better, to get to know our children, so that at the end of the coronavirus, when we get out of this, because we will fight and defeat coronavirus, but we should prepare ourselves mentally now so that we come out as a people better, more tolerant of each other, more kind to each other, a people more patriotic, more loving of our families, and most of all, a fear of God. So we want to thank those communities, the Christian communities, the Muslim communities. We saw yesterday the Indian community of Zambia come out and take it upon themselves as well that they are going to reduce, the, uh, shut down some of their businesses for the next weeks. This is as it be. This is not time for politicking. It's a time to fight myths that this disease is just for one race. It's the time to find the personal discipline and fight the myths that this disease does not attack young people. It is the time for personal discipline to fight the myth that you can cure corona uh, using uh, whiskey or garlic. Dr. Julia has told us many times there is no vaccine 
for the COVID-19. And the best way to beat it is to change behavior, to stay at home and avoid gatherings. With that, Dr. Sufia is ready to give us the briefing for today. Good morning and uh, welcome to today's update. Um, I'd like to begin by expressing gratitude to the members of the public, the church, and speculative groupings that have complied in totality with the regulations that were spelled out by His Excellency President Edgar Chagolou in his aspiration for a COVID-19 free country. Our people in the technical wing of disease intelligence have continued to work with the community and with the various partners to ensure that we continue following up all suspects, strengthening heightening surveillance, conducting disease intelligence activities. Our teams have continued to manage cases in our isolation facilities and various stakeholders have continued to collaborate to ensure the response to the COVID-19 threat is strengthened. Members of the press, countrymen and women, in the last 24 hours, Zambia has recorded one new case of COVID-19. We carried out 50 tests in the last 24 hours and only one was positive. This brings the total number of cases to 29 and the new case is a Lusaka based male adult with a history of travel to Pakistan and who returned aboard Emirates flight EK713 on 18th March 2020. We have transferred him to our isolation center and all his contacts are being tested in line with the standard protocols. The previous 28 patients are in our two facilities, one in Osaka and one in Dola in Masaiti. One patient out of the 28 is severely ill but stable. The rest of the patients remain very stable. The patient who is ill has an underlying chronic respiratory disorder. This patient is now being supported with oxygen, but I emphasize this is a patient who has been in the care of health workers at a private facility suffering from a chronic respiratory disorder and this is a superimposed infection. This patient is receiving specialist attention at one of our facilities. He has both history of contact with people who travel to COVID high risk countries like Pakistan and also history of travel to South Africa. Globally, 199 countries and territories as well as two conveyances have been affected and as we speak today we have recorded globally 664,941 cases including 30,894 deaths. In Africa 4,479 cases have been recorded with 135 deaths in 47 countries. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our disease intelligence and rapid response teams continue to trace and test all contacts. And as surveillance activities continue, we expect to find cases that are positive, depending on contact with people who travel to high COVID risk countries or history of travel to such jurisdictions. Our teams 
for you to be alert and will pick such positive cases and isolate them for management. The efforts by our rapid response teams are aimed at early detection, testing and managing timely all the COVID-19 cases. We want to appreciate the community who have been funding our call centers, alerting us of different individuals who may not have reported themselves. We appreciate the community and we urge them on and ask them to continue working with us in strengthening surveillance. May I also make an appeal to all returning passengers on Emirates, Turkish Airlines, Kenya Airways and South African Airlines from 15th March to date and have not yet been reached by our surveillance team to remain in self-quarantine. To remain in self-quarantine as stipulated in statutory instrument number 22 of 2020. You are requested to notify the health centers or health authorities if you develop any symptoms. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, to win this battle against COVID-19, we need to judiciously adhere, to strictly adhere to the measures that were stipulated by His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Dr. Edgar Chagwagongo, in his national address on 25th March 2020, would like to emphasize the importance of non-essential travel. We not, do not travel out of the country, even within the country. It is not necessary to travel when it is not essential. Don't come to Saka if you don't need to. We have 28 cases here in, we have 27 cases here in Osaka and we are following up contacts. Stay where you are, stay home, limit your chance of contacting someone with COVID. And again, I reiterate, the President has directed Cabinet Office to ensure that Workers who are classified as non-essential workers are quickly distinguished and come up with mechanisms in this coming week of allowing such workers to work from home and to ensure that we anchor on technology to ensure continuity. If you are on public transport, remember you are in contact with different individuals. As we are to the port operators to ensure social distancing within their minibuses, to ensure sanitation within their minibuses, to ensure they're running messages for behavioral change within their minibuses, we urge you only to travel when it is essential. The Public Health Act 2022, if you cannot meet even just one of those your gathering is illegal and will be stopped by the alert public health officers. I want to appreciate again the church that have responded very well to this and the worshipping from home. I want to appreciate those bar owners, restaurant owners who have closed down in line with the directive, the presidential directive to do so to limit the of mass gatherings which would potentiate transmission. However, I also want to use this opportunity to warn those truant businessmen who are defying this directive that they will not only be shut down but they risk having their licenses revoked. Our teams are working in a multi-sectoral, multidisciplinary manner to ensure compliance. Home Affairs, Immigration Police are working with authorized officers from local government, from Minister of Health to ensure compliance. This is meant to protect the public from COVID-19 and it is 
you any other part of guilt and innocence. The statement that the president gave was clear. Bars, restaurants, casinos are closed. Don't start interpreting them in your own way. Start saying, I can open the bar and then people buy it, take away and go home. That's not what the statement says. It simply states that the bars, casinos, restaurants are closed. And any attempt at interpreting will just result in misinterpretation. Should you be found defying that, you will be guilty of committing an offence according to provisions in statutory instruments S21 and 22 and the wrath of the law. First, I emphasize that we should not limit our interests to just business. We have 17 million citizens to protect from COVID-19. And if we trigger human-to-human -human transmission by having mass gatherings, one person in contact with another and transmitting to one, that one person goes home, transmits to the next, and everyone is transmitted to their contacts. Then okay, that was an update from the Ministry of Health, just informing us of the increased total of COVID-19 cases. Please look after yourselves. And here is a video of how you can look after yourselves in Bemba. Coronavirus, it is over at COVID-19. Nishi. Coronavirus, we are here with the Kumona, the Kumkoshi, the Kuribakwa. The Washu Papaksalanga. We are going to get a send out. We are going to get a fish watch with the Coronavirus. We are Na Ubuhulwele <laughs> Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button and follow me on all social media platforms. It's simply at Lilamotams.